Hey, my name is Justin Miller and I want to talk to you about getting your helium hotspot miner out of being relayed. Now, you may have just set it up and you've checked all your configurations and you've done your diagnostics and it's showing that inbound and outbound are okay, everything looks good, but when you look at it in the app, it says that your hotspot is relayed. In fact, when you go to the website at uh, explorer.helium.com, it once again says your hotspot is relayed. And if this is true, it's gonna show your witnesses at zero because your hotspot will not beacon and you will not be able to get any witnesses. And generally speaking, I'm gonna say somewhere between 10% to 50% of your rewards come from being witnessed. In other words, uh, somebody seeing your beacon. So that means you don't want your hotspot to be relayed. Now I'm gonna show you how to fix this problem, but I'm gonna show you how to do it using Xfinity. The reason for that is, honestly, most people have Xfinity. Uh, many of the people I've talked to to be hosts for me for my hotspots, uh, they all have Xfinity. And one thing that unifies many of them is they don't have unlimited data. And that's kind of a problem. Uh, Helium hotspot miners use quite a bit of data, anywhere between 15 to 35 gigabytes of data per month. And while that data comes through as a trickle, meaning it's not really going to affect the bandwidth in the house, you can watch movies, you can work from home, you can have 10 to 15 people in the house using the internet, and it's not gonna affect them, it may affect uh, just them getting overage charges. Because the fact is, Xfinity does not have unlimited data. Uh, generally speaking, it has a limit, and then once you hit that limit, you get overage charges. So to avoid this, to make everybody happy, I generally suggest that you get uh, the uh, XFi complete. Uh, that option gives you unlimited data. Now it's $25 more, and in some ways, uh, when I'm dealing with hosts, I often say make a deal for uh, me to pay them, uh, let's say $75 in the beginning, uh, just to see how things are going, because I know a month later, if they have this problem, I may end up saying, okay, well, you know what, uh, you know, we, we didn't discuss this in the agreement, but I'm willing to pay that $25 so you can get unlimited data. And that makes them happy, because it shows that you care. But, um, <sighs> Hopefully you won't have this problem. I just want you to be aware that that is a great solution for you should you need to. So let's take a look at Xfinity and what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be setting up uh, the uh, port forwarding for the Helium Hotspot Miner to go to 44158. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so as you can see, we're logged into Xfinity right now. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to the top to that Wi-Fi icon and click on it. This is going to take you in to your specific network information. You'll see your Wi-Fi network here and you can either be directly connected via Ethernet or through Wi-Fi. It doesn't matter. We're going to take a look at the network details now under View Network Details and here we can actually see all the devices that are connected to the network. Now, specifically, our device is the Raspberry Pi right here. This is what it shows if you have a SenseCap connected. If you, for example, have a Rack Wireless connected, it'll show Helium Hotspot. Now, these are not assigned and they don't need to be assigned. Uh, something like Xfinity actually takes this information and stores it so it knows uh, what devices were connected previously and will reconnect those devices with the specific IP address in question. So now that you know this, we can go into the network. So I'm going to click on C Network, and here is where you'll find under more advanced settings. So click on advanced settings and then go straight to port forwarding. 
So to set up a port forward, we're just going to add port forward. We're going to select our device, which in this case is the Raspberry Pi. We'll leave it as manual setup. We're going to make that port 44158, and we're going to set the protocol to be TCP. Then you just need to click Next, and that's it. The port will be added. Now don't forget, once the port is added, you will need to restart the Helium hotspot in order for the changes to take effect. This doesn't necessarily mean that the relayed message will go away immediately. Sometimes it takes 20 minutes, sometimes it takes 7 days. So the best way to just verify that your port is open is by going to a website like portchecker.co or canyouseeme.org. These are port checking tools out there. They'll automatically locate your IP address on based on the computer that you are currently on. And assuming that's the computer you need to be referencing, uh, you can just go and under port check, type in 44158, and then check the port. That'll let you know that if the port is open or not open. In this case, obviously, the port is open. Okay, so I hope that information was helpful to you. Uh, some other information I just want to give you, too. You may have to do things, as I mentioned, like do a hard reset on your Helium Hotspot Miner. And uh, if it didn't happen that first time and you're worried and you think you got to do it again, there could be an issue where you're thinking... Um, well, I got to go to your house and unplug it, or can you call the, uh, the host and ask them to unplug your Helium Hotspot Miner? So I definitely recommend, uh, that you invest in smart plugs. Uh, I got a bunch of these. You can get them at Costco, you can get them at Amazon. Uh, they're not super expensive, but the point being is that you can go into your app on your phone and just turn that sucker off and turn it back on again. I mean, I'd wait maybe 30 seconds in between that, but point being is you can do something like that remotely. You don't need to set it up on their internet, just like when you're setting everything else up, but it makes things a whole lot easier later on to figure out what's going on. Um, your app will actually let you know if there is a problem, like maybe there's no electricity coming through. So the app will show that uh, the um, plug is off and you won't be able to turn it on again. One other thing I also wanted to mention is, I know I've been showing a lot of rack wireless uh, helium miners. They're not my favorite. Honestly, my favorite is SenseCap. SenseCap miners are awesome, and they have a great dashboard interface to monitor them, to uh, if you see that there's a problem, and like I said, you need to restart it. Well, you won't be able to restart it through the dashboard, but you know what, let me show you. Okay, so this is the SenseCap dashboard, and as you can see right off the bat, I know that I have two miners that are online. They're synced and they're not relayed. I got their firmware version right here. I can see reward information. If I want, I can make this full screen as it is now or even refresh the data. I can go into this interactive map and I can locate where the miners are specifically. I also have information here on the right side to determine if they're online offline. I can uh, put satellite streets over it. A lot of kind of information like this that is really useful. Also, I can go into that specific hotspot. I can say select one of my hotspots and get all the data on my hotspot. More specifically, the kind of data I want to know is, for example, is it relayed? Is it synced? It actually will give me the option if it's not synced to fast sync it. Uh, over here on the right side, I have uh, status on the P2P, I have coordinates, I can know whether or not uh, I am using a Wi-Fi or I am using Ethernet. I got firmware information. And one thing that's interesting for me is that Helium hotspots uh, that are sense cap actually have fans to cool them. And I don't need to build my own system for this. So it will tell me or rather more specifically, uh, when the temperature is above 70, the fan turns on and then it turns off after it is cooled down to 45. 
And that's great. And I can also then know when these have gone on and when they've gone off. I got CPU usage, memory usage, SD usage, etc. Um, so there's just a lot of data in here that's useful. And I think that many of you would love to see this kind of information when you are watching your hotspots remotely. Okay, well, hey, that's it. I hope it was helpful. Please do like and subscribe if you like the content I'm uh, doing here. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.